Hallo liebe Leute, es geht los. Unser nächster Interviewgast kommt sofort. Es ist Björn. Juju Smith Schuster, Receiver von den Patriots und Super Bowl Champion mit den Chiefs. Let's ride. Oh, there This he is. Juju, is. everyone. Hello, Juju. Hey, oh, what's yeah. up, man? What's up, boss? How you guys doing? Hey, my name is Bjorn. Hey. This is Patrick. Just so you know, thank you for taking oh, your time. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah, of course, man. Thank you for having me. Same here, man. I expected you to show up with some drip here, man. I, I thought you were going <laughs> to represent a little bit. I just talked to Bjorn about, hey, we got some questions on. I'm like, man, we got to talk. We got to talk about his drip because whenever I see you before the game, man, you are drip the fuck out. <laughs> Love it. Love no, it. That. Thank you, thank you. Now we just uh, we just finished uh, practice and uh, was able to come here and uh, talk to you guys. But man, if I would have known, man, I would have came out, man, all iced out, decked out. You know, just you know, all I do on game day. Uh, yeah, for the German community, man, they they love it. I just I went on your website. You got you got your own uh, merchandise line and stuff like yes, that. Sir, I saw yes, you got sir. a little French bulldog. Do you have a dog? You got a French bulldog? Yeah, yeah. So I got a French bulldog. I also got oh. a Doberman. Too, as oh, well. I, I, I'm a, I'm a British bulldog guy. Mine passed okay. away when he was 12 years old, but I love, I love bulldogs, Frenchies, the British ones. Oh, I the love best, man. Yes, I love the, the, the flat nosed dogs are the best, man, hands down. See, he doesn't know about it. <laughs> I got a Labrador, man. I, I, yeah, I, I, see, I, I, see, <laughs> see, see. Well, now we got that out of the way. He now he wants to talk some serious shit. I'm sorry, no, no, bro. Trust me, before we <laughs> talk serious <laughs> shit, I appreciate that. How was your trip to Madrid, man? As, as we know, everybody knows you're a big soccer fan, so I am. You I am Madrid, huh? Yeah, so I went to Madrid, uh, hung out with my friend uh, Vinny. Uh, you know, uh, big, big, you know, Real Madrid fan, and you know, just been following them for you know the past couple of years, and. I uh, just kind of dove into soccer, bro, around COVID time. And uh, one year I got I got injured and I was out for the season. And, and I wanted to pick up like a new hobby. And soccer, what you guys call football over there, um, <laughs> is kind of something I picked up. So I ended up playing FIFA a lot, kind of following the players, uh, kind of got into that realm and then pretty much just fell in love with the game. Uh, it's so interesting. Like the fan base is insane. Um, the culture of that of that sport is is incredible. Now just, they they they're they going to be playing tonight. Are you going to watch it against Bayern? Of course, of course, man. All right, I'm I'll be home at so it comes on at 3 p.m. here, and I'm already yeah. already set up, getting ready to watch the game. Awesome. Oh, you you just mentioned you, hey, your friend is Vinny. You know, what I'm saying like Real Madrid star. How did you meet him? Like, how did that happen? It's funny. Uh, so he actually like when I was in Pittsburgh um, for the Steelers, my rookie year, he sent me a jersey. And at the time, I really wasn't interested or know anything about soccer. But at the time, um, Vinny heard about me uh, through his his little brother because I, I played Fortnite with uh, Travis Scott and some of those guys. Yeah. Go well, through the video game, and then it kind of just linked up. And then as time got you know passed on, you know I ended up you know started following him, and then he's kind of you know sent me jerseys. I've sent him jerseys, and we just kept in touch. And you awesome. know he invited me to come out, and I was like, for sure, bro. So I went, I, when I went, I was able to see Brazil versus uh, Spain, and then I was able to see Real Madrid play too. So I got yeah, to see yeah. some cool games. Yeah, that's well, awesome. this is this is awesome. Tonight's going to be wild. I mean, Bayern München against Real, that's a big game, obviously. You know, as you know, then the Champions go, League finals go going to be played at, Come on, Juju, give us a at Wembley. Game, What'd you say? Score prediction. What's oh, score yeah. prediction? Um, man, dude, two high-power teams if – You know, if Byron comes out healthy, you know, I, I and you know both teams are healthy going into this game. I'm I'm gonna say it's, it's gonna be uh four three uh Real Madrid. Yeah. Four three, seven I, goals? I, yeah, yeah. I can Damn, that. I like it. Including, wow. including the, the aggregate, like including that. The 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 one like including that too, not just the score tonight, like four oh. three, including the, the, oh, the okay. last right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, you, well, you got two uh, on the offense, dude. It's <laughs> like to be honest, like Dortmund, like that game last night, like that team played so well. They're playing good footy right now against a team like PSG, who's been playing good, you know, all year. I just think that Dortmund team is going to be really cool to see them play. Like they deserve it. I mean, it's been 11 years since they've been in the, in the Champions League finals, and what that team is doing is amazing. So it's going to be cool. But you know, obviously, I'm rooting for Real Madrid. 
But at the same time, bro, like if two German teams are in the finals, that's insane, bro. Like that's yeah. going to be. And for myself, like I'm going to the game. So whoever is in it, I'll be oh. out to support you. No, oh, you flying out to Wembley? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For for the weekend. Wow. Damn. Are you living the good life, man? Bro, bro. Shit. It, it's nice too because playing for, you know, Boston, the, the we're always on the East Coast. So a flight to, to London is about six hours. So it's, yeah, it's not that bad. Point. Yeah, but it's also be really cool though to see Drew Bellin play against his old team in the oh, Champions yeah. Final. And he's all in it, man. Are you all? Are you yeah, in, bro? Shit. In, bro. In. <laughs> shit. The, the, the German fans gonna be surprised, like, oh, okay, shit. But this is because our, our planet is getting so small. Everybody is connected through social media. Uh, I, I, I freaking love it. But let's let's get to football, man. I, I mean, you finished last year on IR. You had an ankle injury. How's mm -hmm. rehab going? How's your ankle? What is the outlook for 2024? Yeah, man, the, the rehab was amazing, man. Um, you know, going into last year towards the end of my the season, you know, I did have an ankle injury that I was playing through throughout games and, you know, kind of had to shut it down, you know, didn't want to make it worse than what it was. And then this offseason had a great time to recover, rest, and get it back. So it's been great, man. I'm fully healthy, excited for this year, um, and just to get after it. You know, it, it, we have a whole new coaching staff. The environment here is amazing. The coaches here are, you know, phenomenal. So, Uh, we just had a competition right now that we do for like we have like little groups like eight teams within our our, our team uh eight groups and we did an egg toss and, and uh i just won the egg toss challenge for my team so i got some extra points so <laughs> the competition here is, is amazing man so we're all excited just to get out there and play it's okay it seems like with bill belichick he's the greatest of all time but it seems cool. like it, I, i feel it here in germany The fresh start was necessary. Jared Mayo is, is like it's an egg. Or what is it, egg challenge? You know what I'm saying? So right, it seems right. like he's trying to put a little fun into this, because you know, even though when I was not part, you know, I played for the Colts back in the day, and everybody always said, "Man, you win championships, but the mood is always kind of low during practice." Yes, you know what I'm yes, so yes. it seems like Jared Mayo is kind of going. He's a player's coach, played and everything. So it seems like he's going to loose it up a little bit. Huh? That's, that's yeah, yeah. Key, you know? That's how it is. And I think, you know, you're saying everything right. I mean, he's been in our position. He knows what it's like to play, you know, under the greatest coach of all time. But he also knows what it feels like to be a player, you know, in this circumstance. So for us, it, it's he's building that that camaraderie and that foundation early with our players and that chemistry. So it's, it's amazing. That's awesome. Okay. Well, now, obviously, for our uh, German-speaking audience, they all want to find out how your experience was last year actually playing here in Germany. How was that for you, the the entire trip? Obviously, you travel a lot. It's not that you've been on this side of the planet probably for the first time, but but how was the experience of playing a regular season game on the other side of the planet, and then especially here in Germany, how you feel the fans interacted? Give us some insight on, on how it felt on your end. Oh, man, it, it felt amazing. Uh, I think one of the coolest things is that, you know, when, they, when we did, like, the German anthem, it was like the, you could just feel the energy in the crowd, the passion, You know, sometimes playing here, as you as you may know, Bijan, is that like it, it feels like it's like sometimes it feels like it's a concert. People come to watch, you know, us play, but for there, it's like the fans are so engaged and they just have that passion. You feel the energy, um, and everyone in the crowd is just you know cheering, you know. And for us, what was the different part about it is that you know the stadium was so small, so you could just feel the energy from both sides. And you know, when there's a momentum shift, like you felt that, you can tell like. Oh damn! This is happening. This is happening, and even like when you guys have your little chance, how you guys sing your chance, like in between, like, <laughs> like in between plays or in the middle of the game, like that was really cool. Like multiple times, like I had to pause and like look around, be like, "Wow! Like we're actually playing in Germany! Like this is actually insane." That's cool. That's man. I have um, the draft happened, uh, Juju, and um, I know Jacoby Brissett is a very, very good quarterback who's been to a few teams and kind of the bridge quarterback, right? He was signed just in case they don't draft a quarterback. They did draft a quarterback. Were you surprised? Did you expect it? Like, what was your, what are your feelings now, Drake May? Um, excited, man. Uh, honestly, you know, with you know our situation, you know, I think that was kind of like the right move that they're moving towards is drafting a quarterback, and you know. I've been watching Drake May for a while now in college, and he's a guy who can throw the ball, sit in the pocket. I mean, he has height. He can see pretty much over the old line. He can run the ball. He's a physical player. Um, it's funny, bro. About like 19 weeks ago, or like about 20, 19 weeks ago, um, 
he announced that he was, you know, going into the draft. And I commented, I was like, wow, bro, proud of success. And then fast forward, you know, we draft him. So it's kind of kind of all circles back. But uh, excited to work with him uh, as a young player coming into this room where he has a lot of bets around him to help him. That's awesome. I mean. No, you guys, you guys, uh, I mean, you're the veteran but, but probably in the receiver room, right? Yes, sir, um, yes, sir. So, so I think you guys drafted two, two receiver, one in the second round, one in the fourth round. Did you have a chance to interact with them already? I mean, are they reaching out to you or are you as yeah. a veteran reaching out to them? How do you bring young guys up to speed? Uh, I reached out to them as soon as we drafted them, uh, kind of hit their line. You know, a lot of times I've been in their position. So, like, you know, they give them a couple of days, you know, to, you know, party, live it up, you know, enjoy the accomplishments that they've received. And, you know, I reached out to them individually, like, yo, bro, like, super excited to have you here. You know, can't wait to work with you. Uh, just keep going, man. And that's, you know, that's the that's the first part, right? You get drafted. You, you're you on the team. Now, the, you know, the, the, the second part is now you got to actually make the team produce. You know, there's a reason why we signed you. So, uh, just excited to have the young guys and have them under my wing. And, you know, I'm an open book, so I can learn from them. They can learn from me. And we just keep, you know, pushing forward. Now, when when you look back at your career, you were drafted uh, by the Steelers, obviously, when AB was still around. And now it's fast forward 2017 to 24. Doesn't it feel weird? Like, what? I mean, shit, seven years already? All of a sudden, I'm the old guy? You know, in yeah. the group, I'm the I'm like like the 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 in the receiver room. I'm the old guy all of a sudden. When it feels like a moment ago, I remember. I don't know whether Bjorn was whether Bjorn was already around, but I remember doing the draft here on TV, and and you were picked. I went like, well, shit, you know, this guy's going to be a pretty good receiver. And next thing we know, you're already a veteran. I mean, yeah, geez, that's flies, weird. Man. Time flies, man. Uh, been in the league for, you know, seven years, going on year eight. I'm only 27 years old, so it, it it does fly. And that's one thing I did learn is that, you know, every moment you take, you know, don't take it for granted. It's a blessing to be, you know, you know, playing in this position. And it's awesome that I have guys who, you know, they come into the league and they look up to me and I'm like, damn, like, I am getting old. Like, I'm not the young guy in the room no more. I'm the <laughs> Everyone looks up to me. Like, even today when we were going out to the field, I was like, hey, Juju, like, what do we, you know, what are we doing to get better? You know, they kind of look up to me. So it, it's nice, man. It's nice to have that, you know, camaraderie and, and a leader to be leader in, in our room and for this team. Especially, I mean, it's crazy to say, but not a lot of guys on this team have a Super Bowl, even though the, the Patriots uh, won a lot in the, in the yeah, last yeah. What, a decade. But you won it with the Chiefs, right? What was a, the moment for you, though? You know what I'm saying? Signing that one-year deal with the Chiefs, knowing you're playing with Patrick Mahomes, you had a good year, man, and you guys won it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I mean... That year was a year where, you know, I took a bet on myself, you know, not being able to sign, you know, with, you know, either going back to the Steelers or signing again with another team. And, you know, I took the chance of playing with, you know, a guy like Patrick Mahomes, who's, you know, arguably the best in the game right now. And uh, being able to go there and produce and play and then have an opportunity to come here, you know, to play in Boston. Uh, one thing I did learn was that I know what it takes to win, you know, a championship and, you know, what it takes to get there. So, you know, bringing, from, bringing that from over there to here, It's an organization where they know where it takes to win. But like you said, there's not a lot of people on this team now who have rings. Um, and there's probably just a few of them. And it's nice that, you know, our head coach kind of experienced that. So he knows what it takes. And then we also got some vets on the team with, uh, that kind of got that experience too. So yeah, it's nice. Now, do you, do you feel like, uh, you know, a Super Bowl is actually changing you or your perception onto your career as a player? Uh, after you won the Super Bowl, do you go about business in a different way now that you reach the mountaintop, or or do you just? I mean, you, did you never change a bit, or, uh, no, or was man, there something that you felt after the Super Bowl? Man, uh, that feeling people always ask me about that. There's that's a feeling that you can never explain unless you get there and feel that those experience. And you know, for myself, like I want to get back there. You know, I, I'm still hungry for more. I'm, I'm never satisfied. There's always more out there. Um, And that's the ultimate goal. And it's not like uh, how soccer, man, you have like so many different trophies where you can win so many different times where like the ultimate one is the Champions League one, right? And that's like the, the Super Bowl for us. And ours is a lot harder because there's only one trophy and, and it, we play a lot of games and it's a very, very physical game. So it's tough, but never satisfied. Um, 
I will ask question, Patrick, unless you have another question. We always ask. Um, the, I got tons of questions, but we, I, we I got know, time issues wanna, too. I know. I know. Keep you 15 minutes to so not waste your time. <laughs> yeah. We can talk all day, especially this guy, the other guy here. Patrick can talk all day, man. That's crazy. <laughs> but uh, we always ask, um, what advice would you give a younger self or the other kids out there? You know what I'm saying? Becoming a pro becoming a professional athlete, becoming an NFL player. You know what I'm saying? Like, what did you learn, man? I know you're 27, but let's, yeah. let's be honest, man, you matured also a lot in front of our eyes and in front of the fan bases. You know what I'm saying? From yes, franchise yes. to franchise and franchise. I mean, Pittsburgh, then you left Pittsburgh, you know, then you won a Super Bowl. I mean, that's, it's a crazy career you have there. You know what I'm saying? So what would you tell yourself when you were younger or I guess our kids now? I, I would say, that. you know, I would say three things, right? There's three things that I I would say to my younger self. Number one, I would say, you know, be a sponge. You know, observe, I mean, absorb as much as you can. You know, as a sponge, you know, absorb as much information as you can from your coaches, from your teammates. Don't be a person that thinks you know it all. Uh, just because you've played the, a certain amount of years in the league, you can learn a lot, you know, from guys who's been in this league for 10 plus years, from guys who's been in, in this room for a couple months, you know, be a sponge because you can learn a lot from that way. Uh, number two is build your relationships within the building, you know, not just with your teammates and coaches, build the relationship with the people, the cafeteria people, the janitor, the staff. Uh, you just never know because those things go a long way. When you do go to a new team, people, the other teams, they do want to know how that person is, you know, in the locker room, outside the locker room. And number three, start figuring out what you want to do as a business person you know early in your career so when that time comes you know you have something to lean back on and you're not trying to focus out where you want to be at what you want to do after you're done um i feel like a lot of times like yeah we do focus on football and that is our main job and that's our main sports and whatever that may be yes focus on that but the times where you do have some downtime put some time into what you want to do life after football you know for us football doesn't last very long it's minimum the average people is three and a half years but the guys who do play the 10 to 15 years Man, like it, once it's done, that's still not half of your life. You still got to live way more. Um, unlike, you know, I wish I was, I mean, I wish I was a soccer player. I would have been like a center mid, honestly. But <laughs> soccer, I mean, and, and they, play they, until they, you're 45. Right? Like that's, uh, and it's crazy because like they don't put their body as much as we do on the line. So it's, it's, those are the three things that I would say. So be a sponge, you know, build your relationship with the people in the building. Um, and then number three is, you know, build something that you love and you're passionate about outside of your sports. What is that for you? Now you triggered me for another question. Oh, you see, now have, he's gone. Now he's sorry, to go you yeah, yeah. Do you already have some, we know soccer is your hobby. Is there also already a plan for you, like for you after your career? Like it sounds like you have one already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for myself, you know, I'm big into, you know, I am started a little bit of real estate and then I also got into, I love gaming. So I do have my own gaming team. Um, that I do right now, and I kind of focus on a little bit on the side. Uh, but the, for the most part, it is going towards down the real estate business okay. side of things. And okay. invest. I like, to, I like to invest, you know. So if you guys got a couple of business out there, man, that. Hey, so oh, the, said hey, God, don't hey, say hey, that. You know that Björn, hey, Björn, he is owner. He's part owner and a, a sports director of a team here in the European League of Football, Berlin Thunder. He's the man. He's the owner. He's a part owner. He's got that money. If you have that project with the Patriots, man, I will be investing too, man. That's all right. That's all right. Oh, man. Oh, you got to oh, awesome. You got to do it. I appreciate it. Do do. Man. Yes. Good Thanks. Luck for the season. Oh, wait, wait. I got a question yes. for you guys. All right. Oh, okay. So who, do you guys, who, do you guys, who do you guys got for this game today? I got Real. I got Real. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, Juju, that's dangerous. Whatever you go with, you have to go with the German team. I'm the guy who always go. goes with the German team. You got to go with the German team. You I'm going go. with the German team, man. I'm, I, I want Bayern Munich versus Dortmund, man. Just like 11 years ago, the last time Dortmund was in the, yes. uh, in the final was against Bayern Munich. Uh, man, that's, that's good for the country. You know what I'm saying? If two German so teams I'm are just, in there, man. Okay, so I just found out that Dortmund was named after a beer. I don't know that. that. I don't even know that. that like, Patrick, are, you know? Name Dortmund? No. No. Dortmund? No. I, 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 I never heard of it. I never heard of it either. But I'm. I'm not. Maybe. Not. Maybe my friends are trolling me because they're they're big. They're they're big uh, Liverpool fans. <laughs> Hey, no, the, no. The German I, fans are gonna tell us, and we're gonna Google this after. So yeah, we don't, we don't know. <laughs> hey, we're, we're not we're the stupid pro American guys. Okay, okay, we're so not the this. Tr right. prototype okay, what, uh, Germans. Okay, what about so Dortmund versus Bayern? Who you guys got? 
or does it matter? Does it? I have. Baya. I think Baya Baya. Well. <laughs> Yeah. You know. Well, not now. People are gonna hate us. Man, dude, you no. man, I'm gonna go no. trash us, man. Uh, why you turn this shit around? Well, we appreciate <laughs> you taking the time. Uh, hopefully, we're gonna see each other. I know that Bjorn and I, we go, we do the NFL on TV. Hopefully, we're gonna be. Uh, uh, covering one of your games on site so we can see each other in person. If you ever want to come out this way, make sure you holler at us. The German oh, fans sure. love you over here. And, 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 and shit, I got to buy something off your website now. That's I, I appreciate like it, man. It. Thank you, guys. Thanks All for right, taking the time, that. Juju. Thank you. Have a good yeah, day. Have a good one. Auf Wiedersehen.